Hey, my name is Erika Padilla Morales. I'm a nuclear medicine technologist. So I'm certified as a certified nuclear medicine technologist or CNMT. A nuclear medicine technologist. In layperson's terms, I consider ourselves an artist scientist because we are taking a nuclear tracer, we are injecting it into the patient, and then we are imaging the the energy that is coming from the patient. They are used for diagnosis. They are used for um, following up how a, a patient might be progressing in their treatment or in their disease process. But in addition, we can also do therapeutics where we're using nuclear medicines, some kind of radioactive medication as a way of uh, taking care of the patient. We might be um, giving them a course of treatment similar to similar to chemotherapy, but instead of using chemicals, we're using nuclear medicine in order to um, help a patient through their process. So what motivated me to pursue a career in medicine? Um, I was a teacher. In 2011, my aunt started her journey with cancer and I was introduced to all of these other caretakers in addition to doctors and nurses that were involved in her care. And uh, it caused a shift in me. I knew that my job was ending and I was seeking what the next opportunity was. So when I found nuclear medicine, I wanted to see what that was about. And that inspired me to pursue that path. With my aunt's con cancer, I was introduced, like I said, to all of these different um, profession, all of these different professionals who are working with her. And, you know, I was looking at radiation therapy. When I saw nuclear medicine, I saw that it combined my love of science with my love of people as an educator. And I thought, oh my God, I get to combine these two great things that I really, really enjoy. Um, and the more I researched the field, the relationship part is what really keyed me into nuclear medicine technology because as a teacher I really love the relationships with my students so I really wanted to translate that into my medical career as well. I found the nuclear medicine training online. I knew that I needed to finish my associate's degree so I did my prerequisites for the course um, and I researched schools that had bachelor's degree because I knew that I wanted a bachelor's degree in case I wanted to go further. Three programs that I was looking at were the Kaiser Permanente School of Allied Health Sciences in Richmond, California, um, the Manhattan College in Bronx, New York, um, and then the VA also has a program that is free. Um, that was a certification program, so I took that off the table. Um, and the Kaiser Permanente School was close to where I lived. I'm in Oakland, California, so I didn't have to move across the country. And I applied, I interviewed with them, and I was lucky enough to get in. My training lasted 18 months. Within that 18 months, we got our didactic, we did our um, clinical rotations, and we were also pre prepared for our certification exam. So when I crossed the stage, I was ready to go to work, which I thought was great. There are a lot of programs that you take those exams after you graduate, but the Kaiser program really wants you to finish those certification exams. So this way, when you, when you graduate, you're ready to work. So there were there were there were several options, right? There are people who paid for it outright. Um, there are people who, if they qualified for a loan with the program, they would pay for their schooling via that loan. And if they got hired by Kaiser Permanente, you could pay off that student loan through your paycheck. And then there were many more students like me who were working through the program. I was working full time. Uh, commuting on my bicycle. <laughs> so I worked full time, but I also did a GoFundMe campaign. So a lot of people do fundraising to help support them. I think the biggest obstacle was uh, working full time while, while pursuing my education. The things that helped me overcome those obstacles definitely included my, 
my family out here, my, my chosen family and friends, because my family is back east, they're 3,000 miles away. So I knew that I had to rely on a bank of people who would be my cheerleaders when I didn't quite have enough energy or sleep. <laughs> um, and that included my classmates, that included my teachers, and that definitely included my friends. I actually took steps to find a job before I graduated, and our, our program encouraged us to do that. We went to the National Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging Conference um, two months before we graduated. So that just expanded my world and see, I got to see nuclear medicine in a national and in a global context. Um, I actually got an internship opportunity with the European Association of Nuclear Medicine for their annual conference by my exposure in that national conference. Um, I did an internship in addition at a hospital in Barcelona because of my exposure to the international experience there. Um, so after that internship, that gave me a foothold and actually one of my clinical sites offered me a job. The thing I find most rewarding about this career is that I'm just one part of a team that is taking care of, of a patient. It's really powerful to know that there are so many people focused on one person's care. And the fact that I can be a part of that is incredible. I think one of, the, one of the greatest challenges about my career is that it's constantly evolving. So we're asked to constantly to keep learning, um, which I love because I work with a lot of cancer patients, you know, I get to see the progress that they make. And for some people, the progress is a decline and that can be difficult. Um, but I, I take a lot of inspiration and I take a lot of um, hope from the fact that I'm doing the best that I can in order to support a person to be in the best health state that they can be. I was surprised at how tight knit of a community the nuclear medicine community is. And I was surprised to know um, how much of a secret this career is. Because when you say nuclear medicine technologist, we're like, what? Do you, do you work with nuclear energy? So there's really a lot of education around what we do. And even within within radiology, there are CT techs who don't know what we do. There are, you know, sonography people who don't know what we do. So it's the surprising thing is how many people don't know what we do and yet how essential we are in so many patients care. So for any aspiring nuclear medicine technologist, I want you to do several things. One, memorize that technetium is the 43rd element of the periodic table. A lot of the radionuclides, radio tracers that we use are based in, in technetium. So know and love technetium. Um, two, really get involved in the professional organizations. There's so much information to learn and there's so many people that you can connect with. You can specialize in any um, any organ system in the body. If you want to do research versus working with patients every day, um, it's a huge field. So really get a taste for what your potential options are and then start honing your way there. Mm -hmm.